Hi, Craig. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Teresa? Doing well. Uh, with no preseason games, uh, what's the challenge going to be getting your special teams ready, you know, for the opener in three weeks? You know, when you don't have those uh, those times to maybe work through all the guys, do you add extra sessions? Uh, how do you try to you – know, what are you doing to help prepare them and find those guys? Yeah, you know, one of the big things I think that we're, we're doing to help out this situation uh, because we're not getting them in preseason games is we're trying to put them in as many competitive drills – uh, that we can find. Not, not that we're adding stuff to practice, but having it be more competitive and getting them in situations, game-like type situations where they got to go down there and run, um, you know, play in space and things like that. So we're, we're trying to do as much stuff in practice to simulate the game uh, for special teams as we can. Uh, Jim? Hey, Craig, good to see you. Uh, I know it's still early, but how would you say the kicking competition competition is going so far? And and it's another situation where how difficult is it going to be where you're not going to have games to judge them off of? Yeah, I, I would say the kicking situation has uh, been very competitive. Um, you know, they're being consistent, uh, which has been great to see. They're pushing each other, and it's it's kind of fun to see those guys really talking to one another and helping each other out. But um, you know, as of right now, it's been neck and neck, and these guys have been doing a great job competing against each other, and, it, and it's been fun to watch. Um, you know, it, it is going to be a little bit different because it is not a game-like situation, uh, but we're still trying to do things uh, in practice to make it those game-like situations where it could be a hurry-up field goal at the end of the half or at the end of the game, or even just trying to put pressure on those guys um, whether it's the guys over on the other side yelling, whether it's us doing some different things, um, we're, we're trying to put as much pressure on those guys um, because they won't get that in the preseason games. Uh, John Glass? Hey, Craig, um, I was going to ask you, how many guys typically do you think are sort of special team stand uh, special teams specialists, on a roster, and and does that change at all this year with the uh, you know, a bit more expanded roster on game day? Yeah, you know it's it's different for every team. Uh, that's that's the big thing. You know, you got to go through your roster and see, um, you know, the guys that you can play that are going to help your team win. And whether it's offense or defense or maybe one or two extra special teams guys, um, you know, we're we're gonna have guys on the active roster that are going to help us win. And if it happens to be a couple extra special teams guys, that's what we're going to do. Um, but, I, but I think that's a huge part. You know, if we get to add some guys, you know, obviously the one's going to be an offensive lineman, but you know, that extra spot uh, could be for a special teams player. And, you know, we, I think we're doing a good job of telling those guys that, yeah, you got to play offensive defense, but there could be an extra spot on special teams if you can excel in there. Uh, with David? Craig, as good as Brett Kern was last year, how nitpicky did you have to get in terms of identifying things for him to work on this offseason? Yeah, it's tough. Um, but obviously, we hold Brett to a very high standard here. And, you know, he's going to be his own worst critic. You know, I might point things out here and there just to nitpick you know, because obviously he's done a real good job these past couple years and throughout his career. But, you know, any little detail that we can help him out with as coaches, um, you know, he's all for it. But, you know, he, he's going to make his own corrections. He's going to know when he miss hits a ball and we're going to talk about it. And, you know, I mean, he takes one step the wrong way or an inch here or there. He's going to know about it. And, you know, he's hard on himself, but uh, it's good. So, yeah, we had to come up with a few things to try to nitpick on, um, but he handles it and he takes coaching and um, goes out there and tries to improve every day. Uh, Teron? Yeah, what's up, Coach? Uh, for your returners, punt returners specifically, how do you – or what are some ideas that, that you've come up with to be able to simulate those situations where, you know, you have the gunners running down and they're – trying to catch that, that punt in, in the midst of uh, those guys bearing down on it. How do you rep that? Like, what, what's, what are some ideas that you've come up with? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I uh, think we did pretty well as far as, you know, what we've come up with is 
we want to try to put as much pressure on those guys that are catching punts. And whether we got to get three or four guys around him when he goes and catches it, you know, we'll do that. And not like they're getting the total live look as a punt returner, but if we can get guys that are in front of him all the time, He's got to come up and make contested catches, whether it's with the Gunners or just the coach or the other returners that are back there helping him out. Uh, We want to try to do those different things to help him make those contested catches where he's just looking at the ball and he's not worried about what's going around him. Uh, Luke? Hey, Craig, when you're coaching your your punt returners, how do you handle uh, helping them to find the balance between – the need to advance the ball and help the offense. A lot of guys have talked about that you all like to get the – have sort of the 10-yard rule of getting first down versus field the ball cleanly, don't make a mistake, and just making sure the offense gets the ball. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing that we tell our returners is we've got to attain possession of the football no matter what. Um, And if we can get 10 yards, that's great. Um, but the most important thing is to give our offense the ball or get them a first down afterwards. Uh, you know, we really harp on that with those guys. We want them to come up and catch everything cleanly. And if they don't feel comfortable, you know, we'll make a call to let those guys know that we can't come up and catch it. But we want to make sure when it comes down to it, whether it's a fair catch or we catch the ball and run for 10 yards, that we maintain possession of the football. Uh, Terry? Craig, with 16 practice squad spots now and obviously the uncertainty of the COVID that could take somebody out at any time, have you guys had any discussions about maybe stashing an extra kicker on the practice squad just in case? You know, we've discussed many things. And, uh, you know, I think you always got to look at different ways because of what's going on right now. And, And you have no idea what can happen at any point in time. Um, you know, and, and those are really things for, you know, our general manager um, and Ryan Cowden, too. Those, those guys will talk about all that stuff, um, you know, and Coach Vrabel. They'll end up talking about what, what's best for our roster and how we're going to do things. But, you know, I'm sure everything's being discussed and talked about just because of the unknown that could happen at any point in time. Um, so, you know, we'll always be looking and evaluating people to see what's going on. Uh, David? Greg, back to the idea of core special teams players. How, how much easier is your job being with an organization that'll bring in a DeZubner, a Chris Milton in recent years, Darren Bates, and, and devote roster spots to those guys? Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel blessed uh, being a part of an organization who, you know, really put an emphasis on special teams. And when you get guys like Nick, Chris Milton, guys like that who have done a really good job in the past on special teams, it's going to make my job easier uh, of having those guys that really understand their role and they accept their role and they're going to excel in it. And then, you know, they're leaders too because they'll talk to the young guys, they'll talk to other guys that are going to be involved in it. And we're lucky enough too to have veteran players who are even starters who will play on special teams. And once you get core special teams players and you get veterans to buy in that they might have some type of role during the game, it just makes our job a lot easier with that. But, uh, you know, I I do feel lucky that we put a major emphasis on special teams and getting players to understand their role. 